Welcome back everybody. So today is the last lecture video for this uh, second module of this course on aquifer property. So the last of the properties uh, before we move on to uh, Darcy's law and the law of transport in groundwater. Uh, so this lecture is about specific storage and storativity. Now, what is this? So we've talked about specific yield uh, so far and specific retention last time. Uh, and I said the specific yield is basically the water that readily flows by gravity, you know, out of the soil, out of the sponge. So the implication of that or the implied um, and stated, you know, assumption is that we're talking about a non-confined aquifer, a phreatic aquifer, a, a water table aquifer, right? So for a confined aquifer, obviously there's no gravity because it's between confining layers. So the water is trapped in there and it can't really flow out by gravity. So if we want to extract water for, from a confined aquifer, we probably have you know, to pump it out or to you know, add some, something to it. And where is, so when we pump water out of an aquifer that has a confining layer, right, the water table can't just drop. Like it's trapped in there. Water is incompressible. So we can't just like there's no air in there, right? There's just water. So what happens? How do we get it out? And this is where the specific storage comes in, right? So specific storage really uh, is related to the compressibility of the formation is itself, of the skeleton, if you will, of the you know, uh, mineral matrix where the water is trapped. So when we pump water out, water flows because there is some compressibility in there. So water itself has some compressibility and mostly the formation itself has some compressibility. So this is how we get the water out. Because again, the water table can't go down because there's no water table, right? There's no free uh, surface to the atmosphere. Uh, it is stuck in that layer that doesn't change, you know, size. All right, so specific storage is the amount of water per unit volume of a saturated formation that is stored or expelled from storage owing to the compressibility of the mineral skeleton or the, and the pore water per unit change on, in head. So again, that's where the, you know, if you pump something, you, you add or you remove ed, head or you use power, basically. So you drop head. So now it's a potentiometric surface, right? Not a piezometric surface. So it's not free to the atmosphere. Uh, in mathematical terms here, you can see that the specific storage is, again, rho g. So we've talked about that before, right? This is your specific weight. So density times gravity. And then here, alpha is the compressibility of the matrix. And then beta here is the compressibility of the water, okay? So, and then here is porosity, uh, just because obviously there's only so much water in there, right? So compressibility of the water times the porosity, and then the compressibility of the skeleton, and that gives you a specific storage. Now, specific storage has units of one over length, right? So it's not a percent, like the specific yield is just, you know, 20%, as we've seen in the last lecture. Here we're talking about something that has units of per length. So it's kind of a rate, if you will. So you have to multiply, oh, excuse me. You have to multiply the specific storage by the thickness of the aquifer B, right? To get the percent value. Now, B is really important. We'll see it over and over and over in the next couple of modules in this course, in the Darcy's law and the laws of transport in aquifers. So B is the thickness of a confined aquifer, and that's a constant. Well, you know, the aquifer can have different thicknesses at different places, but it's constant because, again, when you pump it out, right, it's not like there's a water table, so there's nothing to drop. So the thickness of the aquifer stays the same regardless of the pumping you do. Now, the head is different, right? The potentiometric surface is different, but the actual thickness of the water or the aquifer is the same, okay? So B is a constant. Now, when you multiply the specific storage by the thickness of the aquifer, now you have a number that is a percent, right? So it's, it's something that you can um, actually, you know, relate to the specific yield, if you will. So now the storativity, finally, the storativity is the amount of water released from the formation. And if you look down here, storativity is actually the specific yield, so the one that flows freely by gravity if available, and plus the specific storage times the thickness of the aquifer. Now, this is a really important number. Now, one thing that's um, good to remember is that the storativity for an unconfined aquifer, for a water table aquifer, is basically the specific yield. 
because the specific storage is much, 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 much lower than the specific yield, right? So imagine again, if you have to pump something that is stuck in there, you need a lot of energy. If there's a water table, it just flows out, you know, right out, like very freely. So a specific storage times the thickness is usually orders of magnitude, you know, lower than uh, the specific storage for uh, the unconfined aquifers. So again, if your storativity is, let's say, more than 10%, you know this is an unconfined aquifer. If it's low, if it's below, you know, a few percent or below one percent, let's say, you know it's a confined aquifer. So storativity for a confined aquifer is basically only due to compressibility. The storativity for an unconfined aquifer is basically due only to specific yield. Note that in a in a water table aquifer, in an unconfined aquifer, right, there's still some compressibility of the water and of the matrix of the skeleton. Is still there, but it's so small compared to just the water flowing freely, right? Uh, that is negligible, right? For an unconfined aquifer, it's the opposite. There's no way, there's no specific yield at all, basically. So all the water you get is from the specific storage, okay? So again, remember those uh, terms and those definitions uh, as we'll use them uh, in the following chapters. So in the, the next module, so this is the concluding lecture on aquifer properties. And we'll start uh, with Darcy's law and looking at uh, Darcy and his, his experiments in the next module. Thank you.